Alright, this is the third video of the Sacred Cow Tipper debunking the August 21st, 2017 Eclipse teaching video by Steve Ciccolani of Discover Ministries. Okay, third video. Uh, we were just getting to the part about eclipses, and like I said, I don't know if Steve bothered to look up and learn anything about eclipses. Uh, that he thinks this eclipse is uh, going to go across America, which it's going to cover more than America, <laughs> you know. So that right there is kind of flawed to begin with. But anyhow, I went ahead and did a little research because I'm no expert. I love astronomy, but I'm no expert at it. I did a little research. This is what I came up with. According to space.com, that's a popular science website, eclipses last, are you ready? Remember, he was comparing the darkness that was on the entire land at Christ's crucifixion to what's going to happen in America. The eclipse, or whatever you want to call it, at the crucifixion lasted three hours and was over the whole entire land. Okay, according to space.com, you ready? Eclipses last 7 minutes and 31 seconds or much shorter. Sorry, Steve. And there are four types of solar eclipses. There's total, angular, partial, and hybrid. During the brief period of totality, when the sun is completely covered, the beautiful corona, the tenuous outer, outer atmosphere of the sun, is revealed. Totality may last as long as 7 minutes and 31 seconds, though most total eclipses are usually much shorter. So we've got a major problem here. If you're, uh, number one, you said this, uh, Jesus gave a sign to the Pharisees. Jesus said a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after the sign. He said the only sign you're going to have is a sign of Jonah. And that had nothing to do with the eclipse. The sign of Jonah was what? He was in the great fish, the whale, uh, whether it was a whale or whatever, I don't know. But he was in the great fish's belly for three days and three nights. And the Son of Man would go to the heart of the earth for three days, three nights. Okay, so now we're talking about three days and three nights, not three hours. And so if we're going to compare uh, apples to oranges, or in this case, apples to rocks, apples to planets apples to universes. I mean, that's what we're comparing here. That's how far off this is. All right, so total eclipses are 7 minutes 31 seconds long or much shorter. So I said, Steve, how often do solar eclipses happen? They seem to be happening all the time. Uh, solar eclipses average 2.4 times every year. According to the according to the science websites, you mentioned that through an archaeological find that there was an eclipse in Nineveh the same year Jonah went to preach destruction in Nineveh. Unfortunately, these things happen all of the time, so it doesn't really matter. They seem to be pretty common, just like the blood moons tetrads have been very common over the last 2,000 years. Okay, I'm gonna now went to another science website. Okay, abc.net.au, probably for Australia, I don't know, slash science, slash, uh, forward slash articles, 2012, okay? There's an average of 2.4 solar eclipses every year and four types of eclipse, he explains, uh, the person they were interviewing, all occurring during the new moon phase of the moon cycle when it passes between the Earth and the Sun. Okay, so as you can see, Solar and lunar eclipses are very common. Um, and saying that's the sign Jesus gave when he actually told you what the sign was, that he would go to hell three days and three nights. He told you what the sign was, so where are you getting? There's this eclipse sign. And like I said, the eclipse ain't just going to go over America. It's going to start somewhere else go across America and go into the Atlantic Ocean and go somewhere else, all right? So to call, to even call it the Great American Eclipse is, I don't know, it's just, 
other than it going from the northwest corner to the southeast corner, kind of close to that. That's kind of interesting. But other than that, uh, to use this as some sign from God and then say Jesus gave the sign, which is totally false, this is where I have problems. And I have problems. <laughs> Just ask my wife. <laughs> she's filming me, so she's smiling right now. All right, so anyhow, let's go to number three to Steve here. Okay, now now we will talk about Jesus' sign. I've already said it, but I'm going to actually go into it now and read the scriptures. The sign Jesus gave in Matthew 12, 36 through 40, was that he was going to go to the heart of the earth, which in scripture he's talking about hell there, for three days and three nights. This was the only sign he gave, although you were alluding to there being an extra one or some other one. The darkness that came upon the earth wouldn't and didn't convince the Pharisees if they rejected what was already in God's word about the Messiah. Okay, we got 2,000 fulfilled prophecies in scripture already and over 300 up to 330 about the first coming of Christ has already been fulfilled. If they didn't believe those, they ain't going to believe anything. All right? They're not wise people. These, these Pharisees were uh, chose to deny Christ, totally chose to deny Christ. And they led many, many Jewish people to hell because of it. Matthew 12, uh, 40, it says, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Here's your sign. There's your sign, Steve. Notice the word as, okay? For some of you, I mean, my English grammar and all that's bad anymore. I got to correct my, I can still spell, um, spelling bee type stuff really good, but I always have to go back because my typing's bad and correct so much stuff. But uh, the word as is there. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, that means a metaphor, okay? That means Jesus is making a comparison. He's going to do what Jonah did, okay? Something similar. Jonah uh, was in the whale's belly, or the great fish's belly, three days and three nights. And likewise, Jesus would be three days, three nights in the heart of the earth after he was crucified. That was the only sign he gave. Okay, so when you read scripture, if there's a metaphor there, you got to find out what it's there for. If there's a therefore there, find out what the therefore is there for, okay? Alrighty. This was the only sign that Jesus gave the Pharisees. Uh, he said absolutely nothing about a solar eclipse. And Jesus further backs up Matthew 12, 36 to 40 with the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, okay? And I'm going to show that to you right now. Let's go to Luke 16, 19 through... 19 through 31. All right. I'll read the whole section to you. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Now, Jesus was talking about the, the a Pharisee or the Pharisees here because that's who he was just talking to in verse 18. Okay. So keep that in mind. Okay. So this rich man um, was clothed in purple. And purple is usually a sign of royalty or some real high position in a nation, especially Israel. And feared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked Lazarus's sores. Okay. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And we are hearing some weird creature. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> We're outside and we are hearing a really weird sounding creature in our woods right now. Okay, let's get back to it. Okay, so back to Luke 16, 21. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, Moreover, the dogs came and licked Lazarus's sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And that's part of Hades. 
The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, Hades, the, the bad part of Hades, where uh, dead people await judgment, the rich man lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off. And Lazarus in his bosom. Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom. That's, that's a protected, comfortable place that existed in Hades uh, until Jesus came, died, paid, paid for the sins of the Old Testament saints, and took him to heaven. Okay? Luke 16, uh, 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence, or from you. Verse 27, Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send Lazarus to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Now Jesus, Steve, and those listening to these videos, Jesus always brings you back to the Word of God. When they, when G, every time in the Gospels, Jesus talked about uh, the first marriage, the first uh, man and woman, the first this, the first that. I believe it was 23 times he went back and quoted verses from Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 11. Jesus always brings you back to his word. Okay, so if it was important to Jesus, and he told the Pharisees here, they have Moses and the prophets. They had the Old Testament scriptures, all the prophecies about the coming Messiah. There was no reason for them not to believe that uh, Jesus was the one. Let's go on, verse 30. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, <coughs> Okay, why, why would the rich man say, Nay, Father Abraham? I believe it was because of this. The Pharisees followed rabbinical interpretations, traditions of men. Go read all the Gospels. Jesus is always rebuking them for, for the traditions of men. Okay, so I believe this rich man already knew his brothers would not listen to Lazarus, even if Lazarus came back from the dead and went and warned them of hell. Okay. But this is why the rich man said, and he said, Nay, Father Abraham, no, Father Abraham. They ain't, they ain't going to go by the word of God. Are you kidding me? That's what he's saying there. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Okay? <laughs> this was the only sign Jesus was going to give them. Knowing it would do them no good anyhow, as they were making disciples after themselves and not after God and his word. Okay, remember what Jesus said about the Pharisees. You traverse the world and you make a convert. You make him twofold the child of hell more than yourself. That's what Jesus thought of the, uh, the rabbis of his time, these Pharisees, who really didn't follow the word of God. They added things to the word of God, their commentaries, their... Uh, and nowadays you got all these other things that are being added and taught in Christian churches from these same sources and it's very unbiblical but anyhow that's what Jesus thought of the, of the Pharisees of his time Luke 16 31 and he said unto him if they hear not Moses and the prophets okay neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead now, at this point, Jesus is talking about himself, not Lazarus, of course. Okay, so the sign he gave earlier in Matthew 12, 36 through 40, he's reiterating in Luke 16, uh, was it 20, whatever, 20, uh, Luke 19 through 31 here. He's basically saying the same thing. And the Bible says that God gives you two witnesses. Okay, so there you go. Um, 
they had Daniel chapter 9. Uh, in the book of Daniel, written about 500 years before Christ came to die for our sins, it said the Messiah would come, he even gave a timeline, gave you the number of years when the Messiah was going to come. Okay, it just wasn't the Messiah they wanted, so they chose to reject Jesus, all right? Okay, let's... Um, Let's go a little further now. I think I, I proved my point there scripturally, up, down, and all around. Uh, Apostle Paul said something about uh, going about circumspectly. I went around, I circled the wagons in a circle, proved my point with scripture, not some kind of fairy tale, uh, fantastical thing that everybody wants anymore. If the Word of God's not enough for you people, you're going to be deceived, all right? And that's very important that we get back to the Word, all right? According to several passages of Scripture, Jesus and Paul stated that the Jews were blinded because of their rejection of the Messiah and choosing to follow false teachers of his time, okay? They both said that. And then he said, a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, so be careful from who or what you are quoting from, okay? So many people are getting their wisdom from other sources, okay? God and his word is our wisdom. If that's not enough, I plainly stated here, Daniel chapter nine, uh, if that wasn't enough for somebody to believe, you know, you're given a 490 year timeline here and you totally ignored it, you know, you're not gonna believe, you're gonna choose not to believe. It's like talking to atheists. That's how atheists are. You give them all the proof you can give them, and it's still not enough. It's just, you're just wasting your time at some point, and you go talk to the next person. Anyhow, that's the end of uh, video three. We're coming up to video four here in a little bit.